This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. A bimini top provides protection from the sun and elements, so it's considered a must-have for a pleasurable and enjoyable boating experience. However, you will find times when the bimini top may not be needed, or you may want to prolong the life of your bimini top by quickly storing it. When that is desired, use a bimini boot to protect the fabric from the sun and keep it from flapping in the wind when it's not in use. This bimini boot zips along the bottom, making it easy to install it over the top of your folded up bimini. In this video, we'll show you all the steps required to make this bimini boot. At the end of the video, we'll show you how to make a slit for, say, a backstay in a sailboat or if an anchor light is installed, how to make the slit for an anchor light exit at the top of the bimini. Brian from Sayerite is going to show you how to make a bimini boot for yourself. For a custom fitting bimini boot, we recommend removing the bimini frame from the structure. Okay, the first thing we've done is we wrapped our frame up so that way it, it basically keeps everything all together because on the boat it's going to be all folded back and be fairly stationary. Since it's on the table, it's kind of a, a little bit of all over the place. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and roll our fabric out underneath the bimini. Okay, and what we want to do is for this portion of it, we want to make sure that we have at least three to four inches all the way around. We also want to be as square as possible just to make life a little bit easier on ourselves. Okay, about nine. Okay, and we've got a minimum of three to four inches all the way around. Okay, now the first step will be to get some measurements. So we're gonna bring our bimini, gather it up, and what we want to do is we want to get a circumference measurement. So we'll just pull the tape under. And we've got about 12 inches there. Then we want to measure the height of the bows, or the height of, of this all stacked up. Now, our, uh, when we measure this, we're, since we're sitting on top of that eye, we want to exclude the eye because we're, we're not gonna be covering that. So we're actually about three and a half inches. Write that measurement down. We'll be using it later. Okay. What we wanna do is we wanna measure from the bottom of our fabric. Uh, we wanna measure down about four and a half inches. Just make a stop line there. At the same time, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our fabric is in fact even, which I'm measuring to the eye, which four and a half is about three inches above the eye. And we wanna do the same on the other side. So we measured over there, I measured three inches up from the eye was four and a half inches down from our fabric, and I find that to be about the same here. If I measure from the eye, I come up uh, uh, three inches, and then I find that my fabric's at seven and a half, so that's a good number. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my line there four and a half inches below the fabric. Make sure we have everything tucked in so that we're tracing on the frame, not the fabric. and then basically begin making marks. Here we're using the soapstone pencil. These marks will come off easily later on. And be sure to hold the pencil straight up and down to the edge of the tubing. And my top bow, I both, uh, both front and back seems to stick out just a little bit more. So make sure the pencil's straight up. The mark that we placed four and a half inches from the bottom edge of the fabric should be the point where we start and stop that mark. Now we can push the frame with the bimini installed on it out of the way. Okay, now what we just wanna do is just fill in our trace lines. We're just gonna make a couple marks here for basically the um, kind of the beginning of our crown. I'm gonna make one on each side here. Cause that will be kind of a change in some size. And then we'll make another one for the end of our crown. Actually, let's take that a little lower. About 
eight inches there. And actually, we're going to take that a little bit lower yet. Okay, now back to our original measurements. What we want to do here is we're going to actually bring our pattern in. But that's going to vary because down here we've got a lot less material, obviously, than we do up here. So what we want to do is we want to take our original measurement, which was 3.5 inches. This 3.5 inches came from the point where we measured 4.5 inches down the edge of the fabric with the frame all stacked on top of itself. Measure yours and see what it measures at that location. And we want to add 2 inches for each bow except for the primary bow. So this is a three bow bimini. So we're gonna add two inches plus two inches. So we're gonna, that's gonna make our total measurement 7.5 inches. And then here we measured our circumference. We measured our circumference to be 12 inches. What we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract two inches. Our measurement for the top portion is gonna be 10 inches. What we found is that that amount of fabric um, you know, although it seems like a lot, by the time you wrap it around and you sew your spline, you sew on your zipper, that makes for a nice tight fitting bimini. No matter if you have a two bow, three bow, or four bow, it's always subtract two inches at that location. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to extend our lines out two inches. And this one's straight here, so I'm just going to make this straight. And then as you're going, you want to stay perpendicular to our original trace line and just keep making marks every two inches, or every few inches, make them two inches out. And since we're only at two inches, this is actually a portion of this that could be done with our canvas patterning ruler. And the key is to, really I'm following with my eyes I'm following this portion here, and I want to keep that strip either aligned with the, uh, um, basically I want to make sure that my uh, line is in that hole, but also that I'm about even side to side here. Now when we're in the straight way, it looks pretty straight. When we get to the curves though, we need to focus a little more on it. Along the curve here, Brian is trying to keep the Sarac canvas patterning ruler perpendicular to the line that is struck in two inches from the edge he's striking down. We'll stop at that mark we made four and a half inches underneath the fabric's edge. And then we come back and we're just basically connecting our dots and trying to follow the curve as we go. So this will be our outside cut line for the bimini boot. So now, typically on, on boats, when you go to put the bimini on, the bows will actually kind of come out a little bit at the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we wanna go ahead and we wanna come out, whoops, about an inch out for that spread. And so that'll actually be the line we use. And we wanna do that up to our crown. So we're not actually gonna use this line. We're gonna do a new one here, and that's the line we'll be using. You don't know it yet, but these lines that we're striking on will be the inside surface of our boot. And so now we can take our measurement, and which was seven and a half inches. And so we're going to come in seven and a half inches. This is all straight, so seven and a half, and we'll connect those. And then at the top here, we found that our measurement was 10 inches. So here we want to come in 10 inches. And once again, I'm staying perpendicular to my lines here. And so I'll just, and you can either, you know, make the dots here like this to connect later, or if you've got the hands for it, you can trace your line. For us, this 10 inch measurement will stop here where we indicated the beginning of our crown is. We'll place a mark there. For the curve here, come out one inch at the bottom, 
strike a new line to where we indicated the curve begins. This is a straight line from the one inch mark to where that curve begins. Then measure over perpendicular to that line seven and a half inches. That's for our bimini boo. Yours may be different. And then perpendicular to this line, we want to come in. Our bottom measurement was seven and a half. And seven and a half. So we'll go ahead and connect those dots. Okay, now obviously uh, these lines aren't going to work out so well. So what we want to do here is we basically just want to fare this one down to kind of mimic the curve there. We'll mimic the curve on both sides. There we go. This should be a perfectly sized bimini boot for our bimini. Okay, now that we've got our pattern traced out, it's time to determine, okay, how are we gonna do the second half or where's it gonna fall on our fabric? Now, I can tell here because we're only utilizing you know, the top, uh, what, 20, 24 inches of the fabric that on our 60 inch fabric, we've got plenty of room to just fold it in half and just mirror the other side. Uh, you may actually have to nest them. If you had to do that, then what you'd wanna do is you wanna rough scissor cut this one out. And so then that way you could nest the next one on the fabric before you cut your fabric off. Okay, now we're gonna take our pattern and unroll that. Actually, do that this way. And what we want to do then is we just want to take it and fold it in half. The nice thing is this fabric, although it's slippery against the table, it actually is somewhat grippy against itself. So it's easy to do things like this. Because what we're actually gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and hot knife this out but rather than hot knife one panel, then hot knife the other, we're gonna go ahead and hot knife the whole thing all at once. So I'm gonna take my ruler and place it under the fabric and I can feel where my ruler is here. So we'll start here. I'm just gonna keep coming around the curve here. Be sure to cut along the outer mark, not the inner marks. We're cutting both the top surface and the bottom surface of our bimini boot at once. And you'll notice that I am actually cutting this just a little hotter than I normally would, uh, meaning I've got a little bit more smoke coming off the fabric as I regulate the temperature with the trigger. Holding the trigger down permanently while cutting can cause the blade to heat up too much. So we recommend pressing it and then releasing it to allow it to cool down just enough so that it continuously cuts through the fabric. Now what we want to do is we've got two pieces that are basically sealed together. Now here they're coming apart just a little bit. But what we want to do is we want to look at this edge. Without pulling it apart too much, we want to determine, okay, is this together enough that we can just go ahead and sew it? Or would we be better off to peel it apart and baste it? Now in this particular instance, I think that edge is sealed well enough. I'm just going to go ahead and sew it rather than peel it apart and baste it. Just saves me a step. And one last thing. I want to go ahead and round these inside corners just ever so slightly because I'm actually going to be following those with my binding later. And remember I'm doing the inside corner here is the only one I'm rounding. I don't want to round the outside corner because when I open it that part will be straight. Okay, and I'm going to set up for a half inch seam allowance. And before I start sewing, I want to take some of my scrap material because I'm going to be sewing two layers. And just really quick, and actually I need to, somebody's changed my stitch length on me. We'll fix that. Because I want to do the longest stitch possible. We only want enough tension that the knots on the bottom side are pulled up into the fabric. Too much can and result in wrinkles. Tension. Too little, and that get looks an pretty ugly good. stitch on the underside. Bottom side here looks great. 
Okay, we're just sewing the outside spline currently. This first stitch is a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric. Using the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide, we'll keep that stitch a half inch from the edge as we sew around the perimeter of the outer edge of the bimini boot. We're using a V92 polyester thread. A polyester thread is UV resistant, but not UV proof. In the tropics, you can expect it to last a few years. In mild climates where the UV is not as intense, it may last five to eight years. If you'd like a lifetime thread, use a PTFE thread. We recommend Profilin from Sayerite. It sews better than any PTFE thread I've ever sewn with. Profilin thread from Sayerite is UV proof and very chemical resistant. As is customary at the end and the beginning of your sewing, do some reversing to lock your stitch in place. Okay, since I'm getting ready to do a top stitch, I wanted to pull out and check and make sure I have plenty of thread. Uh, that is, you might want to wind another one. I'm going to trust that that's enough because we're only doing one run. So you just want to make sure when you're doing a top stitch, it's better to not run out of thread. If you do, it's not that big a deal, but if you're a perfectionist, then you should avoid running out of thread on a top stitch. We're performing a semi-flat filled seam here. Okay, now, now remember we've got the fabrics all kind of sealed together. Well, we want to take, eliminate that. Now, as you do separate your fabric, you do want to be careful that you don't uh, cut yourself. So don't drag your hands along the seam. But just go ahead and break it all open. This Bimini boot was made from top notch nine. And when sealed with a hot knife, it definitely seals the edge well. So be careful not to rip the fabric as you tear it apart. Okay, now we're gonna pull our guide off. And now we wanna go ahead and do our top stitch. Now we wanna just go ahead and figure out which way we're gonna lay it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and lay it that way. So what we'll do is as we sew, we're going to use this edge of our foot as our guide. So we'll set, and then we'll be sewing through the three layers, including the uh, um, the spline there. As Brian sews, this stitch is about an eighth inch away from that first stitch, the splayed out portion of that first stitch, and he wants to pull the fabric snugly so that it's splayed out nicely as he sews. Now as I'm sewing, I'm actually doing two things here. I'm pulling it apart and I'm feeling with my thumb to make sure I can feel the turn back edge. And that'll get to, that'll become most important here when you're getting to the curved portions because that edge may want to flip itself under without you realizing it. Remember this is our top stitch. It's going to be the most obvious stitch on the uh, entire boot. So might as well take your time and get it right. Occasionally, Brian's hand will go underneath the panel to feel the half-inch tail that he should be sewing through to make sure that it's facing, in this situation, to the right. He's sewing through not only the top layer, but that half-inch tail underneath. This is the curved section of the boot, so the fabric's a little bit wrinkly as he sews along, but he's ensuring that the part that he's sewing is flat. Okay, now we're getting to the straightaway. Things get a whole lot easier here. I can pick up a little bit of speed. But I still obviously want to keep my hands on things, keep things in check. The Sayerite sewing machine is set up with the Ultrafeed Industrial Sewing Table and Workhorse Servo Motor. A great workstation with phenomenal power and slow speed control. Here at the end, just as we did at the beginning, do some reversing. Okay, now that we've sewn our top stitch, we went ahead and we've turned our cover back uh, basically inside out and see our pattern lines are on the outside. Also our seam is sticking out so we know that we're working on the inside of the cover. So what we want to do is we're going to take our zipper which uh, we've already measured and found that the 96 inch zipper is going to be perfect but what you would do is start above the curve probably just a little bit and then basically take your zipper and walk it all the way around your cover And this is to check the size and be sure that we're where we want it to be. Finding that we're going to be just a, just a smidge too long. Okay. okay, what I want to do is I want to take and mark the start point of my zipper. I want to make sure that I have things lined up here. And I want to start just above 
the end of the curve. So I'll make a line there, and then I'll make a matching line right there. And that's going to be the start of my zipper. At the other corner, I want to do the same thing, only now I'm marking the end of my zipper. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply our basting tape to our zipper, and we're going to start at the slider end, and notice we're applying it to the back side of the zipper. And we're using the 3 8 inch basting tape, which really we should be using the quarter inch with the zipper, but the thing is, because of this going around the curves and such, uh, the quarter inch probably won't stick well enough, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to work with the uh, 3 8 inch today. Instead of using scissors to cut the basting tape, he puts his finger on top and pulls, and it breaks apart. Okay, now I want to go ahead and unzip my zipper to separate them. And I'm going to apply the side with out the zipper slider first. And so I want to start at my mark. And we want to start applying it with the zipper tape facing the edge, the zipper teeth facing in. And as you go around corners, you kind of need to gather it a little bit. What will happen then is when we straighten out and sew, it'll be like that. After this zipper and the other side zipper is basted in place, we will take this bimini boot to the sewing machine and sew binding all around the perimeter. That binding will secure the zipper and the binding all at once. Okay, so now as I come to the end here, I want to take note of where my mark is because you know your zipper may be a lot longer than this maybe a lot shorter but basically what I want to do is I want to go ahead and cut it off at my mark which will be two teeth it's not uncommon for zippers to be too long just be sure to cut the end that has the stop and not the starter box or starter pin or post. We're using the Sarah canvas patterning ruler here to ensure that the basting tape sticks as best as possible to that fabric. I'm going to go ahead and flip things over here. My, this is my starter pin. So obviously my starter pin needs to match up to my starter box. And once again we're going to start at our mark and go right along the edge. Don't throw out the extra teeth that you cut off. We're going to use those as a stop later on. Okay, and you should end up at roughly the same place. So I've got my line there, and I'm going to be cutting off two teeth. If you don't end up at the same place, rebaste again. They need to match up as best as possible. Having them be a quarter inch off is okay, but more than that, redo. Okay, now I am sealing the ends now, but I am not uh, putting stops on. Putting stops on will come after the binding is sewn around the perimeter. Here we're going to use the Sayrite one and a half inch swing away binder. And here we're using Top Notch 9 binding in a black color. We'll start sewing the binding in place along one of the openings at the end of the bimini boot. That way the seam or junction when the binding overlaps itself will not be as noticeable. We did not show it, but it's always a good idea to sew some binding on some scrap fabric first to ensure that the tension is set right. We find that sewing through top notch 9 binding requires a little bit more tension than it does just sewing through top notch. Now in this section it's actually easier to hold the zipper straight and kind of gather the material up. All the while make sure your zipper is still attached to your material. If you do it this way, you must make sure that the zipper is attached with the seam stick. Notice here, Brian is concentrating on the exiting point of the binder, being sure that the fabric is pushed up well inside the fold of the binding. He doesn't particularly pay any attention to anything else. When sewing the binding on, he pays very close attention to that exiting point, because if he does not, it is likely that the stitch will miss not only the flange of the zipper, but the edge of the fabric, and then the binding would just be flapping in the wind, and our zipper would not be secured. Once again, as we come, come to the curve part, it's easier to keep your zipper straight, 
make sure you're still attached to your material and uh, you know kind of gather the material up as you go through the curved area okay once he gets past his zipper notice what he does at the corner he's gonna go nice and slow and push that fabric at the exiting point into the binder or should I say into the fold of the binding whoops there he actually has a little wrinkle he doesn't notice it but he actually wrinkled the fabric at the corner and that will probably be okay I don't know if you can see it above the foot but there's a little wrinkle that's probably not very noticeable here's another corner he pushes the fabric in at the exiting point not before it then he's careful because this is where the starter box is and notice the presser feet want to basically land on top of that box so he has to basically push the zipper out a little bit so that that uh, side of the foot can so past the starter box there we go we're past it now the slider has been pushed down He's going to talk about that next. Now you'll notice before I came to the end here, I had my zipper slider moved up away from it. Um, it just makes life a whole lot easier to sew over the end without the zipper slider there. So I'm actually coming up to my zipper slider now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bury my needle, lift my foot up, and then get my slider out of the way there and then we won't have to worry about it at all while we're sewing. Remember to drop your foot and off to the races. For your information, we're using the UltraFeed set up in the industrial table stand with Workhorse Servo Motor, a phenomenal package for slow speed control, power, and an excellent workstation. If you already own an UltraFeed sewing machine, you can purchase this package and place your UltraFeed in it. Or, if you don't have an UltraFeed, you can buy an UltraFeed and this package if you like. The UltraFeed is the world's best portable walking foot sewing machine. There's another corner achieved. Beautiful job. Now we're coming to the starting point where we started our binding. What he'll do here is use the Serite Edge hot knife and cut the binding so that it overlaps by about a half inch to an inch over the start end. Then he'll carefully sew up to that junction, pull the swing away, one inch binder away, and feed that on by hand here with the sewing machine. Watch. I like to hold it by, by hand here at the end. That way you can make sure everything's straight on both sides. And just, of course, watch your fingers. And remember, the bottom side is actually our outside, so that's more important. So it's okay that we're coming in a little bit there. We want the edge and our bottom to be what we're concerned about. Then do a couple back stitches there. And not quite perfect. Now, I would only do this if you have a very steady hand and you're good with your hot knife, because it's very easy to burn the material. But basically what I'm doing is I'm just kind of melting the underside binding so that it matches up with the top side binding. There we go. A little better. All right, before we before we go ahead and put our zipper stops on, we want to go ahead and zip up our boot and just double check and make sure that we have the zipper facing the right direction which it would appear that we do. Okay, now for our stops. In the beginning, we cut two teeth off, so we're gonna trim out two teeth. If you had cut more, doesn't really matter, you want two. So we'll take those two teeth and just lock them in here. Okay, now, carefully take our hot knife without melting any of our fabric here. We want to basically turn the, the plastic part nice and gooey. And we want to do that on both sides.
Okay, now we'll let that cool down before we cut the rest of the tab off. And we'll do the same with the other side. Now that this cooled off, has cooled off, we're just gonna go ahead and cut the tape off there and kind of trim that up. The reason we cooled it off is because the, the tape portion can flame up on you if it gets too hot. And we'll cut this off too. Just kind of that keeps up. the slider from coming off the end of the zipper. Our Bimini boot does not require a backstay slit or a slit for a light or anything else. But after we sew on the logo here, we're going to show you how to do that too. So stick around. There we go. The Sayrite logo is an adhesive label that can be stuck to your application to proudly show that you did it yourself. You can stick it in the center of your Bimini boot or off to the side. It's up to you. Sticking it is typically not enough, so we'll unzip the boot and take it to the sewing machine and sew around the perimeter, because adhesives do not like to stick to a lot of outdoor fabrics. So sewing it in place like this will keep that logo where we want it. We'll sew a straight stitch around the entire perimeter. We're going to show this in double time. Brian backs off some of the upper tension. He doesn't want wrinkles. He just wants the logo to stay in place. So we only need enough tension so that the uh, stitch is created. At the beginning and at the end, do some reversing to lock the stitch in place. And your logo is now secured. Or should I say, our logo is now secured. <laughs> Need your boot to go around an obstacle like a light or a backstay? We're going to show you up next how to make a slit that zips shut. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a zipper for a backstay slit. Now this could be for a backstay, it could be for, you know, maybe it's on a pontoon or a power boat where you've got an anchor light that sticks out. But basically this is for any obstruction that would be at the top of the, uh, uh, of the Bimini boot. Uh, the first step would be obviously to go to the boat and mark it, uh, mark where it falls on here. Now, we're gonna assume that this is a backstay slit and, and, and that it ends right at the spline, okay? So we've marked our spline or, or where our, uh, our, our backstay comes out. Now, if this was going to be a, uh, say a light or something like that, you might need a slightly larger hole at the top, but the process is still gonna be the same. And this, I should note that this is a mock-up of a uh, Bimini boot because this isn't our actual Bimini boot. We don't have a, um, any obstruction on the Bimini we built, but obviously many of you will. In our Bimini boot, we had one single zipper. This particular one, we're gonna assume since there is an obstruction, you would have two zippers, uh, one that uh, uh, on each side, or possibly even say you have a split backstay, you would have a total of three zippers. You'd have uh, a zipper on the port side, a zipper on the starboard side, and a zipper in the middle, and you'd have two slits. Really, the process is still the same regardless. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. We wanna reinforce the area around the end of the, uh, uh, end of the slit. First thing is we're gonna take a, a piece of shelter right, and what we wanna do is cut uh, two square pieces. For this particular one, I'm gonna do about three inches by three inches. Now, if your application is for a, uh, um, say you've gotta cut a two inch diameter hole or a one inch diameter hole, you may wanna do a slightly larger um, hole, but for this, we're gonna do three inches. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and apply some basting tape to our shelter right here. Shelter right is a tough vinyl fabric. It's excellent for shafe protection patches. Cut edges do not unravel. And we wanna go ahead and center this up over top of our, our end. And we wanna go ahead and mark the end of our slit. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip that over and I'm gonna feel through the material where my square is. And I wanna go ahead and, and match that up. If you have to find the corners because you can't feel it, you can use pins to poke through the fabric to find each corner. Okay, now what I want to do is go ahead and mark my actual slit and or hole. The soapstone pencil marks great on the top notch 9 fabric, but it does not on the vinyl. So we used a scribe all pencil for the vinyl. 
Not that it's too important. You probably could figure that out on your own. Now we're going to sew around the entire perimeter of this shelterite patch, including the area where our slit will be made. So we want to bury the needle at corners and make 90 degree turns. When he finds the corner, the needle's buried, he lifts his presser foot and rolls the fabric around to make the turn. If he's a little bit off, he will use the link lever and make adjustments if he's too shy of the corner or too far in the corner. Watch. So let's go back one stitch there. He went back a full stitch. He probably could have done a half stitch back here by holding the lever only halfway rather than all the way in reverse. That's okay. Now he'll sew right up that slit, very close to the slit, but with enough room that we can actually set the fabric. We want that stitch close to the edge. That will keep the shelter right uh, reinforcing that area where the slit will be made. We're also going to sew binding on that slit area, so it will be tough enough. And do some reversing here at the top of our slit to reinforce it well. There we go. Okay, so what I've done is I've sewn around the perimeter, and then I've also sewn along both sides of the slit, and I've gone a couple extra stitches across. If this was a hole, you would actually sew around the hole as opposed to uh, just stopping it at the very end. Now I'm going to go ahead and hot knife. I don't know if we mentioned in this video, but the hot knife helps prevent the edge of the fabric from unraveling. Though there will be binding here, it also helps to keep the stitch from pulling out of the edge of the fabric when the stitch is close. And then when I get to the shelter right, I'll need to cut that with scissors. And I want to stop right there. Okay, now, so for this particular application, because this is such a short slit, and also I want to be able to sew right to the very end, I'm going to go ahead and just apply my uh, binding by hand as opposed to use a binder. But I do want, when I do my binding here, I do want hot knife uh, ends here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that. We're going to apply basting tape along both sides of each strip of binding. And so we'll apply our first strip here. And I want to go ahead and get it as far up to the end as possible here. I'm go ahead and pull off one side and I'm actually going to start it on the bottom here. The cut edge of the fabric should be centered in the middle of the binding. I want to get it lined up. Just stick my material to it. Now the binding can be folded back onto the top surface of that slit. And then we'll go ahead and pull the other side off. At the end of that binding, where the back state would come through the uh, slit, you could cut a smaller shelterite vinyl patch and sew it over the end of the binding there to give it a more finished look. We're not going to do that, but you can do that if you like. I want to do that a little closer to the edge there. Now we'll just sew that binding in place, remembering to do some reversing at the beginning to lock our stitch in place, and also at the end. As you can see, using seam stick to base the binding in place on both sides for small runs like this, and especially where the binding comes to an end like this, it can be done just as easily without the one inch sewing away binder. Follow that procedure for both sides of the binding. We'll not be showing that. Now just cut off the excess binding at the end of our application using a hot knife to prevent the raveling of the binding. Next, we'll install the zipper. Okay, now we want to apply basting tape to the front side of our zipper. Front side, meaning the slider's puller is facing up. What we want to do here is when we, when we apply the, we want this to be a nice tight fit. So what we'll want to do is I'm actually going to apply the two sides separately, but I want to make sure that I have the teeth 
um, basically kind of centered up right on the uh, right on the slit there. So I'm going to separate my zipper, and we're going to do the first side. And we're starting with our starter box and starter pin at the bottom. And as you can see, I'm putting it so that the, the edge is right about halfway down my teeth. And it's okay to just go right on past it. We do the same thing with our other side. I'm going to pull the slider up out of the way. And when you get up here, you'll, you'll basically see that your zipper is kind of overlapping, and that's intentional, because that way it pulls it together nice and tight. As he sews this on, watch what he does with the needle positioning lever. Here he moves it all the way to the left. And I want to start, start sewing this up past my uh, slit a little bit. Now, if this was a hole, you would actually be stopping your zipper. Uh, you would want to stop sewing your zipper at the hole. This particular one, we're, we're just doing a slit, so we, don't, we can just run right off the end. The excess zipper at the back will be trimmed short later on. Do some reversing at the beginning and sew down the length until you come to the starter box or starter pin on the other end, and then do some more reversing. Here on this side, he moves the needle bar all the way to the right position to get that stitch closer to the teeth. We're sewing the zipper on the back side of our assembly. This is the inside of our assembly. We want to go ahead and cut off our zipper. And it doesn't really matter too terribly much where we cut our zipper off because uh, the zipper is going to basically, the slider will stop before it gets to the uh, back stay. Now, if this was a hole rather than a slit, then you would, you would want to stop prior to the hole. So for instance, if my hole was, was in this area, I would have stopped my zipper here and I would install my zipper stops down here. But since this is a slit, then I'm gonna go ahead and put my zipper stops up here beyond where the zipper actually is gonna stop. Okay, and I wanna go ahead and install my slider. Now this is a locking slider. And so remember, it's got the little lock in there. So you need to pull the tab as you're going on. Otherwise it won't move. So I'm kind of pinching it to pull the tab and then just slide it into place. And of course it needs to be on the side with the starter box and the tab needs to be facing out. Okay, I'm gonna cut off two pairs of two teeth each from my uh, remaining zipper and take the first one and I just wanna go ahead and lock it in, just kinda get it locked into place with the, at the end there. And take my hot knife. Since we already showed this, we're not going to show the whole process of melting a stop on the end of the zipper. Wrap around the bimini, you'd zip up your bottom zippers, then you'd take this and you'd zip it up, and it would basically stop right at the back stay. Tuck the tab in. This slit allows for an obstacle, such as an anchor light or a back stay on a sailboat. Instead of one long zipper along the bottom of our bimini boot, we would have two zippers coming to this junction point where the slit would need to be made. There you go. That would allow the obstacle to come through the top of our bimini boot. This, of course, is our bottom edge. Our bimini boot is done and is now ready to be installed over top of our bimini that has been collapsed back onto the rigid support struts. Up next is the materials list and the tools that we used to build this Bimini boot. This is the complete list of materials and tools, but it doesn't really show you the quantity of materials that are required for, say, your Bimini boot. So here is an extensive list of materials and the quantities that you will need after measuring your Bimini. We also are showing how many zippers you need depending on the amount of slits if you have a slit for a backstay or an anchor light. Now it's easy to store your bimini and protect it from the sun and elements with a bimini boot. Good choices of fabrics for a bimini boot are obviously a umbrella, marine grain fabric, or in this situation we used Top Notch 9. It's also a great choice for a bimini boot. The design of this bimini boot makes it easy to install the boot quickly. 
with the design of a single zipper along the bottom edge. Then when you're ready to pull your bimini out, it's just simply unzipped along the bottom edge and then you can pull your bimini out and protect the crew and captain. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayrite website or subscribe to the Sayrite YouTube channel. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayrite, thanks for watching.